Who would you? Who's t- Tom Brady is to who, right? Aaron Rodgers to who in the rap? I, I can give. I can make it even even lighter. I can look at this room. Tom Brady to me is a cigar and scotch with his boys. Aaron Rodgers is beer weed. <laughs> That's just both like, are enjoyable. That just, that, yeah, yeah. Look, both, it, hey, I have, yeah. A, I have a good time look, with both. I, I, I like scotch and I like weed, so I'm not finna argue it. But I'm just saying, I think there's different approaches. No. To it, right? I think there's different. No, no. What you mean? No, there's different Tom, approaches. Bro, yeah. Tom they Brady, different people. Of course, Tom Brady approach. is in the room with the weed, and Aaron Rodgers in there with his shirt like this. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I think, I think Aaron, I think Aaron Rodgers. I think Aaron Rodgers got the good weed and will help you get the good weed, but probably just won't smoke with you. We had to fight to get a meal, yeah, wrongfully accused. We had to fight to get a pill. That's why we right to get a deal. He on the team, he gotta eat, you know, despite, despite the skills. Fact. Keep it riding for the fam, you gotta light the wooden wheels straight up. But in the past bag, work up in the trash bag. I'll pass a lot to take the test before I pass class. Yeah. And my family needed bread, I had to come correct. That's why I keep airing it out like I just passed gas. The I am athlete parlay. We did hot, 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 hot. These are guaranteed wins. I'm gonna take Arizona over San Fran. Whoa. It's all about matchups, understanding who's playing against who. It's a game of chess. The big game is two weeks away. The teams have been determined. They leveled up and did what they had to do. We now know who's gonna represent the AFC. We now know who's gonna represent the NFC. They still have some time to prepare for the big game, but you can get in it right now. This is for new users. Download DraftKings Sportsbook. Use promo code ATHLETE. You bet $5, you're going to get 280 in free bets. That's 56 to 1 odds. Use promo code ATHLETE. I Am Athlete is the show, and the platform DraftKings is the sports book. DraftKings.com is the sports book. I Am Athlete is the platform. Parlay, I Am Athlete all day. Promo code ATHLETE. Let's get it. We're here in Miami with the legends from Houston. And uh, I guess this is how y'all do. Y'all came up in a PJ, um, private jet. (laughs) And I heard about this legendary uh, uh, plane ride. Did you say to Arian Foster, the all-time great Arian Foster, Mm -hmm. that just because you play football don't mean you know football? I heard that was a line that came out on the plane. No, let me fix it. <laughs> it's not what I said. I said, I said, listen, you love hip hop, Aaron? He said, yes. Just because I got more years of experience in it, that don't mean that your knowledge or your opinion is less than mine. Mm-hmm. I studied the game, I watch it. I didn't play it professionally like you do, but that don't mean that my opinion ain't where I want it to be. Mm-hmm. That's all I said. And I just said, just because you played the game, that don't mean that it's going to be tough. I'm going to voice some stiff opinions, whether you played it or not. Yeah, that's it. This is my guy right here. Did it come <laughs> off that way, boy? It, it did not come off in the way that he tried to make it sound right now. It got very volatile on the play. <laughs> uh, if you, if you end up. He switched clothes because uh, he was sweating so much. Yeah, I mean, if you end up on the opposite side of an argument with Kiki, just, just don't make plans for dinner. Wow. You know, so we're going to be here a while. We're going to be here. He had to be the, kid, the, the president of the debate club at school for some reason. <laughs> the Tom and the Aaron debate, it was a great debate. You know what I'm saying? Aaron, Aaron Foster, he stood up strong for it. And I just, you know, what you came and said, I don't need to repeat no more. You answered exactly what I had. I told him to ask the next four or five football players we see. Yeah. And the first one we asked but you'll came probably, out with but you'll, pro- but you'll probably get the same type of response because guys start thinking, ah, well, what the, what's the situation? You know, what's the circumstances? And that was Kiki's argument was the fact that when the game is on the line, four to four, you know what I'm saying, one one quarterback may let the coach decide, let's go ahead and kick the field goal and play it safe. And the other one is going to be. I get tired of the the debates about championships in football. Because there's so many variables that go into winning that you can't pin it on one person. Like the greatest, in my opinion, and you don't have a hard time convincing me. The greatest player of all time, like, it's Barry Sanders. Like, just the way, like the way he, the, it, it, there's not a greater athlete that played this game. He didn't sniff the playoffs. 
You know what I mean? So it takes so many more variables involved. Offense, defense, good quarterback, good coaching, good special team. All this stuff has to go your way. And so, like, when you talk about Tom Brady, he's a great talent. One of the greatest of all time, right? But, like, a lot of things fell into place in order for him to win those championships. It wasn't just Tom Brady. That's why it makes me mad when he talk about championships in football. So why, why don't those other things fall into place with other teams? Why does it always seem like it only falls into place in that manner consistently with Tom Brady? He, he always he does his part, for sure. But he, his defense is usually always on par. Great special teams play. I'm talking top-notch special teams play. Um, coaching out of this world, right? It's just they put the pieces together. They have a great staff. All the pieces fall into place. Then you have stuff like players making plays at the right time. If Julian, like we talked about this earlier, Julian Edelman don't catch that ball, do they win that game? Right. That if they if they don't mess up that tuck rule, do they do they win that championship? Like a lot of a lot of things fall into place. It's not minimizing his greatness. It's just making sure that you understand there's so many different variables involved in winning the championship in football. It's hard to say, okay, well this quarterback you know, is greater than this defensive, defensive end, uh, a Lawrence Taylor or even a Deion Sanders or even uh, Randy Moss or Jerry Rice, you know, because it's almost like a skill. What some of these other positions do, bro, it's insane. So it's hard for me to talk about who's the GOAT of football. I don't know if I have an answer for who's the GOAT of football. It's now, not hard. Ooh. He got seven chips. So you can't discredit him for that. Like, <clears throat> I understand what you're saying. There's a lot that goes along with it, but... When you got seven championships, nobody can argue against that. Right? Argue for us what? There's nothing. I'm in there. I'm in the argument. But, but, but what if it, what if it goes back to what Arian said, though? Because the last Super Bowl he threw in the NFC Championship, he threw three interceptions. They won that because of the run game and the defense. That's true, but we was just here a few weeks ago with Shady, and he talked about what being in the locker room with Tom Brady is like, like how he can motivate the whole team. Like when you got 12 on your squad, those guys right, that you can say the right line. Th- yeah, yeah. Walk on water. That's what he said. There it is. <laughs> when you got when you got twelve on your side, you it, it motivates you and it believes you can do things that you wouldn't be able to do without him. I, so I don't know, man. I, 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 I hard to believe. My, my dog. high school. Look, my high school. We went fourteen years without losing a game, right? A hundred and fifty-four wins straight. Football is huge in Houston. Yeah. Football is huge in Florida. Football is huge in Georgia. Georgia. So my whole high school, college career, even in the league, I hear cats say, oh, y'all wasn't that good. Y'all couldn't did it if y'all was down here. We did it. We got, oh, you, we got you, 150, you, whatever you it was, we point. did it. You made a good point. So I don't, I don't care how it happened. We did it. So you can't discredit me. You can say whatever you want. I'll, I'll let everybody say their argument, and then Tom can show up with his seven rings and go like that. And he ain't got to say I call that the Emmitt Smith rule. See, I got people who argue with me about Man, Emin had Larry, the, the best line in it. You can't tell me you're going to plug anybody in that and they're going to turn to the all-time leading rusher ever. You can't tell me that it's four or five quarterbacks that's going to get in there and get seven rings like Tom. There's unselfishness. There's restructuring. I don't, There's restructuring. I don't believe you just plug well, a quarterback in and he come up with yeah, seven. Yeah, because, because it goes back to restructured contracts. It's restructured contracts. Listen yeah. to this. And, and I'll tell you one thing about Brady and Aaron Rodgers because I played against Brady multiple times. And there were times that we came out and we practiced all week. We got Gronk, they got uh, Elderman, they got whoever else they got on the outside. We practiced all week. We get in the game, they come out three tight ends. <laughs> Pound the shit out of us. Tell me how many times Aaron Rodgers would be cool with going into a game plan where predominantly they coming out in jumbo sets. Three tight ends, one wide receivers. So there's a selflessness to it as well That's that people don't add. Yo, you, have no idea, you have no idea what kind of battery you're putting in Kiki back right now. You really don't. You're the Energizer Bunny right now. It's the wrong battery because my, my thing is the wrong battery. That's the bad part about it. You went to AutoZone and you went to get a battery for Escalade, but you actually got it for an Ultima because you're preaching the wrong verse. So here it is. Come when it up comes with this. down, when it comes down. I already down, feel like I lost. Yeah, right. 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 When, That's why he's so good on ESPN. Comes, like, how you come up with that? When it comes down to football, basketball, team sports, I feel like we dig too deep into championships and defining legacies. Right. So when you look at individual sports like tennis and boxing, you actually got to go out there and win that to define your legacy. Sometimes you could just be on the team where you actually doing your part, 
but your teammates are not. So when you go back to look, and I'm not taking anything away from Tom Brady, like his greatness and what he accomplished and, you know, getting there and everything, but every single time Tom Brady won the Super Bowl, that don't mean he won the MVP. Right. I agree. So, so that don't but mean. But like, Brady but, don't care about the MVP. I, I, That's I, I, but, Aaron Rodgers but, would. But, but, but we're talking How about. How do you even make but, that but, determination? But listen, we're, talking about, we're talking about a GOAT conversation. So my thing is everybody's still sitting at the same table. And, like, you could debate this all day long. I debated with the Jordan and LeBron and the Kareem and, and all this. And like I told you all on the plane, some people like to drink red wine. Some people like to drink clear. Some, like, some people like dark. It's your preference. So here's my question for the athletes, right? Brady's seven rings. We're having this argument that Brady's seven rings is dependent on the pieces that they put around him. If Aaron Rodgers is technically a better thrower, than Tom Brady. Why is it so hard to put those pieces around Aaron Rodgers? Shouldn't he be able to be as successful or even more successful? Is it an organizational choice, a decision because he's not necessarily playing ball? Like, why is it that Aaron Rodgers, for some reason, this team will not give him I think it's his what, I what think people it's think his it is? It's like because Rodgers. there's always some, it always seemed like some contention between him and the organization. To be that great of a player, they damn near saying you can go where you want to go at this point. Right. So is it, a, is, is it a different locker room culture? Like you talk about how, you talk about how time goes in the locker room and inspires men. Is, when you, it, is when it, you the quarterback, you like the president. You kissing babies, you shaking hands, you, you doing everything that it takes, right? And I played on teams with great leaders. I played on teams with not such great leaders. And and again, I've never played with Aaron Rodgers. And honestly, I think Aaron Rodgers is the best quarterback that's ever played the game. I've seen him do things in games that I've never seen anybody else do. If somebody ever asked me who did I enjoy playing against the most, it was Aaron Rodgers because he had fun. The way Tom comes across, even when you're on the opposite team, my name's DJ. In the middle of the game, he's like, hey, Deej. <laughs> Deej? I'm like, Deej. <laughs> I'm like, what's up, Tommy? <laughs> You know, just when you get to talking with this guy, he brings you in. He makes you feel a part of it. In between plays, he's telling me about my season, how great I am, and keep pushing. And I'm like, damn, he's on the other side of the ball, and he's motivating me. The football players to the artists, right? Who would you, who's t Tom Brady is to who, right? Aaron Rodgers to who in the rap game? Tom Brady is who, because we talking rings. That was easy. Rings. We talking rings. We talking about you can say everything else that you've done in rap, and then here come Hove. And he overdid it. You talk about sales, hold. You talk about shows, hold. You talk about crowd, hold. You talk about reverence, hold. You talk about loved amongst other artists, looked up to as a not, you know, Jay-Z is my contemporary, right? We both came in around the same time. Yeah, you, right? re you, you rewrote one of his verses. Right, well, he, re he rewrote mine. He, he took my stuff, but that's different. Okay, okay. That's a different thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey! Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. But we're all, we're all dealing with, with relative levels of success. But then we're all kind of taking cues from, from Hope, right? Like, that's where you want to be. Like, if you're a quarterback and you come in the NFL, you're aspiring to be Tom Brady. You're aspiring to get those rings, those chips. You come into hip hop, you're aspiring to be Jay Z. You want that respect, admiration, the sales, the woman. You want the life. You want all of that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And now, Aaron, now, Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers would probably be Nas because Nas has never really been caught up in being the shit and being in the spotlight. He comes, he does what he does, he performs at a high level constantly, and then he goes back in the shadows. We don't really know what Nas does on and the daily basis. And within his peers, within his peers, he get all the love and respect. Because, like I said, Aaron Rodgers is the. I've, I've never had more. Nas, fun Nas may be considered the best writer, but Jay Z is the most successful rapper. Right. I can make it even, even lighter. I can look at this room. Tom Brady to me is a cigar and scotch with his boys. Aaron Rodgers is beer and weed. <laughs> <laughs> That just both like, are enjoyable. That just, that, yeah, yeah. Look, both, it, hey, I have, yeah. A, I have a good time look, with both. I, I, I like scotch and I like weed. So I'm not finna argue that, but I'm just saying I think there's different approaches no. to it, right? I think there's different. No, no what you mean? No, there's T different Tom approaches. Bra yeah. Tom they Brady, different people. Of course, Tom different Brady approaches. is in the room with the weed and Aaron Rodgers in there with his shirt like this. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I think, I think, Aaron, I think Aaron Rodgers. I think Aaron Rodgers got the good weed and will help you get the good weed, but probably just won't smoke with you. But that's the problem. That's the problem. And, 
and, and I ain't saying Tom smoked weed or nothing, but that's the problem. If Tom has to hit the joint one, two times, and he understands just to let everybody know we here together. Nobody said Tom or Aaron no, 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 smoke weed. We ain't saying that. We ain't saying but I'm just, saying, just, put it like this. Let's yeah, say yeah. you put this guy down and drink a beer <laughs> with the beer crew, right? Hey, he'd get right in the sauna, hey, get man, the pedialyte, get the And Rogers got the same system. talent as Dan Marino. Oh, hold on, hold on, time out. Let me, let me, let me take it back same. to football real oh, quick. God, Let's don't get bring back Marino up again. I love it. The Green Bay Packers failed the Aaron Rodgers era. You have this guy, go build around him. Bill d- did it. Bill, Bill understood it. Th- they didn't. They never went out there and made the big splash. They're always, we're going we're gonna to build through the draft, okay? So that's one. Defensively, outside of that, you know, Charles Woodson, defense was trash for the past 10 years or so. So you have a dog on the other side that a lot of us think is the best quarterback ever, but then you won't go give him a defense, help him out, get, get, get and he turn the ball over, give him a couple more opportunities. in Green Bay, because trust me, don't nobody want to stay in Green Bay. So is there a miscommunication somewhere along the line? Because it feels to me like, like Kraft and Belichick and Tom were all on the same page and what they were all willing and committed to do to make it happen. And I just don't see that in Green Bay. Right. It doesn't seem like they value him as a player. Is that team culture? Because it can't be based well, off talent. It goes back or to what character. DJ said, like selflessness. What? It's selflessness. Uh, Bill Belichick's in the f- – Tom Brady's at the front, sitting in the front row. This is Tom Brady to go. He already got a couple of Super Bowls. And Bill Belichick is looking at him saying, Tom, what the hell is this, Tom? Mother effing Tom. You can't do that to super, other superstars. And I think that's the reason it's not about it's not about ownership, head coach, quarterback in New England. It was always Tom was like, oh, I play quarterback. It was selflessness because most superstars wouldn't let, you know, any coach or any owner talk to them that way. I think the relationship with the owner was 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 great. But that relationship with Bill Belichick, it was really player to coach. Me from the outside looking in, I don't even have to be in the locker room, but I could feel energy. I go off of body language. I go off of body language and how players gravitate towards their leader. And so when I look at Tom Brady, I'm looking at him, and all of a sudden, he could touch every culture for some reason. Like, he touched everybody that's on the field. I ain't trying to make it into it. I know a lot of cats that play with New England. They say the exact opposite shit. I ain't going to name no name. This is all we brought up, man. Tom, his galvanizing. That's the word I'm using. Nah, I mean, you've been, you been holding on to that $20 word for about 30 minutes. Like, that two, that Gavin, Aaron don't. Hey, listen, man, I'm going to bring that point up a thousand times. Hey, man, that is on right there for you. Last year in that playoff game, go get that touchdown right there, Aaron Rodgers. Go run that ball seven yards and get your head knocked off and get that touchdown. And when you don't get it and, and Matt LaFleur start talking about kicking that field goal, Tom ain't kicking it. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying these other guys don't do it. I'm saying Tom does it better. That's how we saying. Do we have proof of that, though? He's able to present it in such a genuine manner. How how are you? How are you like coming up with this though? Like because I've I've known people. I've known multiple people that play for both both organizations. My brother went to college with Aaron Rodgers at Cal. I played against Tom Brady at least ten times. How many people have you ever heard say they don't like Tom Brady? A lot. I'm not going. I'm not going. I'm not going to say. I, I'm not going to say. But they no don't name. say it publicly, though. All these other people Why that don't. They? That's, all that's, these other people that's that's that don't career, like their quarterback. Career suicide. You talk. These, you talk about the Golden Boy. Man. How was that career players? suicide? Huh? How was that career? If you if you if you publicly say I don't fuck with Tom Brady and you on the Patriots, like what you mean? Oh, but, you on but, the Patriots? But, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But I think what I think what is saying is that. You, you've seen players oh, he, criticize oh, he their like quarterback. Tom Brady called you I, Deej. I think, he called you Deej. He called you Deej. Hey, but but I'm saying, but I'm. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the show, I'm Deej. Bun call me Deej. Let's do it, baby. Hurt. You've been around some great leaders, down from, I mean, Doc, to KG on the basketball court. How does this translate? This conversation that we're having. I play with. 14 Hall of Famers and future Hall of Famers, right? When you talk about Shaq, KG, Ray Allen, Paul, KD, Russ, James, all those guys. And I started to think about how each one of those guys moved in their own way, right? To get to where they were. Like, and so when I look at a guy like KG, he was more so a guy that was zero tolerance, you know, sweating this 
before the game, <laughs> locker room quiet as shit. Like, it, like, it was like, you know, you was at a funeral. Like, you had to be that locked in. Well, you see, you see. So KG was the leader for the Celtics? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. The heart and soul of the team. By far. Like, we followed his beat because he was a guy that lived by the word sacrifice. And when you look at that Celtic roster, our Celtic team in 08, he was clearly the best player on the floor. Mm. On our team, for sure, right? He came in the first day of training camp and said, you know what? We're going to run our offense through Paul and Ray. I'm going to be the third option. So he set the tone from the jump of sacrifice. I go play with Cleveland. I'm like, let me see what Braun talking about. Well, first of all, he moved like the president, right? But down, the most down earth dude you'll ever meet, though. But he moved like the president. That's why you, you never hear about LeBron James getting caught up in bullshit. Like, in order to catch him up in bullshit, like, you, you have to really be on some FBI type stuff, the way he moved. And I applaud the way he moved. It's strategically, everything is planned out. But then I watch his whole thing, his whole, the way he wants to be great, the way he goes from. I feel like this is a good moment for the young boys watching. When you say move like the president, what is that? So, so what happened, in order to move like the president, you got to have a what? A team, right? So he surrounded himself with a, with a team that tells, that, that tells him what he needs to hear and not what he want to hear. I'm going to give you a story. I play AU with Braun. We played one year together. And, you know, back then you will play nine games in one day. Well, you know, we play AU basketball in between those games. You may hit up McDonald's or whatever fast food spot is around, they don't have a concession stand. At the age of 16, this motherfucker had bags of fruit and water. Like he was out, I, I, no lie, on my kids. He was already practicing nutrition at the age of 16. I don't six. believe that. Bags of fruit, dog. Like bags of fruit that's already cut up, apples, oranges, bananas. At the age of 16, that's crazy. drinking nothing but water. So now, when I'm watching him, and I, we came in in 2003 together. I didn't already started my second career. This man's still going strong. And, I, and, and it's that point of people like, man, he invests two million, two million into his body. That two million got him one billion. Wow. Like, for real, man. Straight up. OG, you seem like you want to respond to that. No, no, I mean, it's just, it's all about discipline, right? And I'm, I'm wondering if, you know, Aaron Rodgers just seemed very loose to me, right? Like a like a functioning quarterback, right? Free like, spirit. no, not even that. Like, just, I don't know, man. He just, he just seems different to me, right? He doesn't seem like, he seems like he plays football because he's good at football, right? And he may genuinely want to win because he's competitive, but like the way you talk about Brady. I don't, I don't see that. I've never seen that. That doesn't mean it's not there. And again, it could just be that he doesn't have a good marketing team, right? They're not, he doesn't get a chance to be shown in that light because he's, you know, working as number two, you know, pretty I much. There's, I think there's, there's definitely tears, right? And I noticed this when I got in the league, right? And it's, it's part of my journey where when I was young, I wanted to be the greatest to ever touch the field. But then when, when you get to the league and you realize the politics, you understand the economics and you're... The love dwindles, right? And and not everybody can say that, right? Some people like Tom Brady, like I, if you like upper thirties, still playing football, you either doing it because you broke, or you just love football, or you just love that shit. And there, there comes a point in time where I have to look at myself in the mirror. It's like, I right, do I want to walk when I'm fifty? You know what I mean? That's a real question you have to ask yourself. They're, they're real. Like I was doing a signing, and I'm I'm looking at Earl Campbell, one of the greatest of all time, right? And he's in a wheelchair. And I'm like, this is crazy. Like, for what? Right. Like, with that Ricky Water shit. You can go across the middle for who? That's a real thing. Like, people don't like that shit because you like, you like your football players, like, you know what I'm saying, headhunters, dogs. But, like, these are men behind these masks. And what I, what I realized when I, was, when, I was, when I was going through my career, it's like, man, you have to, like, be psychotic almost. It's almost like you have to be crazy. I believe that. I believe yeah, that. Yeah, you got to be, like, crazy that. about this shit. To where, to where, like, I'm, I'm 30 years old and I'm like, I'm not waking up at 5 in the morning to run on hills no more. Like, you know what I'm saying? And also, it's, it's different as, as far as, like, when you're in the trenches versus you're a quarterback, right? Yeah. If you're a quarterback, you don't get hit in training camp. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, they be, I used to get so mad. Like, you look at quarterbacks in training camp and they, like, whistling to practice. And shit. 
And like, yo, we about to go to war. You know what I'm saying? Twice a day, dog. Like, and you do you display this or tell this while you playing? No, that's all internal. Okay. So because why, I mean, why, why did you on, ask that hold question? On, hold on, hold on. There's, there's a bit, there's a bit, there's a bit caveat. Though. If that's the case, that lends itself more to Aaron Rodgers than it does. But hold on, there's, there's a big caveat though. This, this is an important part, right? So like, when you when you brought up like Tom Brady, um, is selfless because he took a contract. Like, like bro. I'm not taking no contract, nothing, right? Because I come from the projects. I didn't grow up with shit. So I'm getting everything I can from this league. They not in that situation. Not everybody's in that situation. I don't care about that shit, right? I would much rather have my family and my daughters and my sons and my family secure rather than win a championship so the, so the, so the, that's a good, that's so, a so great that question. whoever can put a trophy and they can, that's, that's you don't great, even get a, a great topic. The, the great leaders, the greatest, they look at you, once they figure out the dynamics of the team and your importance, they refuse to let you quit on yourself. They come to you and they open doors and open your mind and open things about yourself that you may not see. And it might not even be, you're going to be great, you're going to do all these different things, you're going to... Listen, bro, to be honest, you got to run down on kickoff. You third on the depth chart. You probably ain't getting in on offense, you probably ain't getting in on defense. But... You the tone setter on kickoff, dog. We need you. It's a team game, bro. You think Tom Brady talking about we need you on, on kickoff? <laughs> you know what? what the f- are we talking about, man? No, we, no, we not, man. I'm not talking about now you're being presumptive. Now you being presumptive about Brady in the way that we being presumptive right, about Rod. Right. 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 Hey, right. hey, camera, hold on, hold on. If there was ever a, a dude on kickoff and Tom Brady looked at you in your eyes and said, we need you to bust this wedge, holla at me, dog. And I, I, I say I'm wrong. <laughs> right. I say I'm wrong. All right. I say I'm wrong. Hey, bro, the audience is crazy. They hey, some dudes. Uh, no, I don't, want, I don't want the audience. I want the that actually ran right. down yeah, right. and busted the wedge. Can we get him here next yeah, week? Holla at me, dog. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Perk, perk, perk. What you got to say, perk, I do want to ask y'all this about another quarterback. We get on Carson Wentz, right, and rightfully so. I just want to know about Dak Prescott. I'm sitting around here with some, with some, with, hey, look, some guys that played it at the highest level. From my, from my perspective, okay. it, looked like, it looked like Dak is, is not 100% confident in his game. That's just from my perspective. It just don't from, look, from him or from the organization? From himself. From himself. All right. It looked, it looked like he lost a lot of confidence in his game. And once, and once that snowball starts to get rolling down here, I've seen it go. I've seen people change it, and I've seen it derail careers. Ain't no telling where Six. it's gonna go. How new is this though? Right. Is this like post? Is this post injury? Or you, yeah. you see signs of this before? Yeah. Oh, you saying yeah. period? No, I think no, he no, said. No. I think he said since he's come yeah, back. Since he came back from, from his last from, injury. And this is just my. Listen, I'm not. A, I don't, yeah, that was a gruesome I don't, injury. To I, don't, be fair. I don't watch that. Listen, we passed. Day. We passed the injury. We passed. No, but no, but no, is no, he? No, but but, but listen, is he? I think that's what he's saying. Is Dak passed the injury? Right? Is he still playing? A lot of times, a lot of times, injuries like that it take you a year in fans' perspective, a season to get back to your normal self. Like, that was a big time injury. We're talking about a guy before this year was averaging 498 yards of total offense. I mean, it was crazy. Something happened mentally because that second half of the season, Perk, bro, like it, there was the confidence wasn't there. If we're going to keep it real, the confidence wasn't there. He wasn't lighting it up like he should have. Now, some will say, well, the offensive line, the different change-ups there, the wide receivers in and out the lineup, COVID. And that's to your point, there's so much that goes into it that we don't know. And we got to be able to sit back and like, okay, there's more to it. But the casual fans sit back and say, oh, you're getting paid $40 million a year. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to deliver. Fans can't compartmentalize this stuff. They though. can't. They can't. They really can't. They just win. Win. That's your job. You're getting paid $40 million. Win. When you getting paid the big bucks, all that shit go out there. Everybody get paid the same in the playoffs. I, I, don't, I don't give a damn. When you hold out and you get paid the big bucks, I don't give a damn if you dak. I don't give a damn if you Russell Westbrook. It's a certain standard that you have to live up to. If you hurt, if you injured, if you ain't there, you might want to go sit down. Here's my thing about what you said, B. Marshall. Last year you was telling me about his stats. I just told him on the plane, I felt like his stats were somewhat false. Mm. For the simple fact that if you go back and look at his stats and look at his passing yards, a lot of those games they were down. 
and they had to yeah, come back at the end. So I ain't dumb. I know that teams are what, what, what it is. When they in the drop and they giving up those 10 yard passes yeah, yeah, yeah. and he punching it down the field right. and he stat patting right. and doing stat-patting. all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden we say, oh, Dak threw for yeah. 500 yards. But the game nah. don't reflect nah, the stats. The reflect Do he have the it factor? I don't think the team will run through a wall for him. There we go. That's, one, that's not the it factor. See, right now, this, this year, when you got the, the it years factor. Before, all them things start happening, what you talking about? Uh, uh, um, Judah and Adam with balls stuck on his head. You know, uh, uh, it's going to roll your way when you got the it. it, it it's got, I'm just keeping it 100. Watch this is what I'm saying right here by, by Dak. We bring it up. If you win the game, I'm telling you, man, that injury been behind him. He just, whoo. See, winning and losing determine everything about the narrative. If, if, if you win it, we don't want to talk about the shoulder from earlier, the leg last year. Everything is solid. He's been throwing for 400. He's so galvanized. You lose. I'm telling you, the shoulder and early. And it's certain people got the it factor. How do we define what the it factor is? My, my, nephew, my nephew just moved down from Atlanta, and he's trying out for the biggest 7 or 7 team down here in South Florida. And so I'm out there watching the trials. He getting off, boom, boom, boom. He doing this thing. He wide open. Quarterback underthrowing him. He come back to the ball. He trying to be over his head. He dropped the ball. This is a Ma situation. He go, running back to the quarterback, trying to quarterback all this, and then that's a whole nother conversation. I'm like, yo, you got to watch how you move because people watching. You know who that dude is right there? That could be Clemson. That could be Georgia, et cetera, et cetera. But I look at him. I say, why are you so upset that the quarterback underthrew you? right now because you should be cheering for those situations because those are the highlights that's the it factor to where now they cheer you on sports and you make the top 10. so i want to be in those situations where now i can rise above and i can control the narrative so like the it factor we got to clearly define that because yeah the ball can bounce any way but in those the, the, the goats the dogs the it's is the ones that overcome no, anything it factor. my it, my it fact is when i'm looking at Dak prescott and I'm looking at Joe Burrow. Both of those guys suffered injuries right. last year. Both of those guys were both in the running for comeback player of the year. And all of a sudden, we're looking at Joe Burrow, and he has that it, it factor. Guess what else is it factor? And, and Joe Burrow, guess what? That whole Bengals team swag around him. I want to make sure I get this in, mm-hmm. right? I, I had my little, you know what I'm saying? Uh-oh. Shady. Ain't, ain't, ain't no drink. Police here, baby. I'm on it. 25% of why I'm here today, me, real, real talk. <laughs> a specific percentage. A speci- I'm, I'm going to tell you. I can't wait to hear this. 25% <laughs> of why I am here today is this man. And you don't know how you can influence people. 17 years old. I'm trying to decide on where I want to go. I know I want to wear a white helmet. I remember watching a Miami, Florida uh, State game. Somebody spit on the helmet. It was actually Florida versus Florida State. They got in a big fight. I watched Nate Webster in the Gator Bowl almost take uh, Hamilton, the quarterback from Georgia Tech, head off. And I watched the whole sideline get up, grill, dreads. I remember seeing Cisco video, the man ushering on South Beach, right, 13, 14 chicks, bathing suits, whatever, and then the big pimping video. That was the deal that closed it for me. I'm 17, I'm from Cali, I didn't, man, I didn't know where y'all really filmed it or whatever. I just remember seeing some black brothers on a yacht, living, vibing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what is I thought that was in Miami. So after seeing, they got the white helmet, Cisco, you know what I mean? And then these boys on the yacht big time. I'm coming to UM. But then that's what got me to start listening to your music. So I started listening to your music and I heard Swishes and Dojas. Mm. And then I heard, uh, what's the other one? Uh, The Diamonds in Wood. Oh yeah, he been drinking. Hold on, hold on. Uh, yeah. And listen, and I was like, this. And you, I mean, I'm from Cali, so I was on the high feet. For sure, for sure. I was like, this shit different. This shit is Jimi Hendrix. This shit is with the guitar. This some. This is music. So, 
I want to ask you where that sound came from, because I, I personally, I had never heard in hip hop a, a sound that kind of crossed over like that with the guitars. It was it was still hip hop. It was still urban. But at the same time, it had this. Like, where, where did that come from? So that that all speaks to the genius of Pimp. Um, Pimp was a big fan of like Boosie and Parliament funk music, that whole kind of bass um, style. But in order to achieve that sound, you had to have what was known as a Mutron. It was a specific, a specific pedal that you played the bass through in order to get that sound. And so we kept trying to replicate the sound, but it didn't work. He was like, it don't sound the same. We got to find somebody with this box. Now keep in mind, this is in like 1998. This is before the internet and all that. So you actually had to start calling mother and trying to call like a you know a, a music store and say hey we're looking for this pedal oh well nobody's got that pedal okay but do you have any players that come through your store the collectors or somebody that might have it somebody tracked down the guy in New Orleans he was like I got the pedal but I'm not coming without the pedal he's like because I play the bass if you need somebody to play you might as well just you know let me play it so he came in you know what I'm saying he actually came referred by somebody he's like oh yeah if that's who you right. got then he can do it and he ended up playing on like three different albums always. Do you know your influence on culture and, and music? I do now because I can look back. In the moment when it's happening, you don't really know where it's landing with people. Um, I'm from a very small town and my music traveled before I did. So before I got to Louisiana, my music was in Louisiana, but I didn't know who I was in Louisiana until I got there. There was no real way of gauging this kind of stuff because we didn't get a lot of radio play. We weren't connected with a lot of the media outlets, so we didn't really, we weren't charting or anything. So the only way we would know if people liked us somewhere is if we could look and see if people actually bought the music. And as the music started to spread out and go further, and we realized we were connecting with people, we wanted to know more about where they was from so we could incorporate the things we had in common into, right. Right. into the music so we could relate to more people. That was what we wanted to do. We wanted everybody that wanted to know about us to be able to understand us and have something that they could relate to their life experiences based off what we was going through. Right. Everybody didn't receive it initially. You know, we had a lot of blowback from like the media and certain artists in New York who just didn't want to accept the fact that hip hop was, was happening outside of that region and being successful. So we all learned how to just exist outside of the system. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we got out and we put our own tours together and, you know, we, we didn't have record companies that would call distributors for us and get up records plates in stores. We would call distributors. We would call one stops and we would put the music in the back of the car and bring it to the warehouse ourselves. Right. So we started having a totally different relationship business wise. We not only were making the music that was connecting to people, we were also understanding the business on a financial level. Then once we got the fame and record companies started calling, they started to try to give us an average basic deal that they would give every artist. But we understood the dynamic of the industry. We understood how much money we could make off of the music ourselves and we wouldn't just take no any kind of deal. So then it became an era where we were in the right place at the right time where record companies had to overpay to sign artists from the well, South. Do you think that, I, was, I mean it's your show, but do you think that was the catalyst to like a Master P because of the dynamic in hip hop where it was the East Coast and it was like this East Coast, West Coast thing and those were the, the hubs for entertainment and then the South kind of had to get it from the mud, like really had to sell it out of the trunk, move, y'all call it distributor. Do you think that was the catalyst for like, cats like Master P? Yeah, like yeah, like if you had a hustler mentality that you could make it, but if you had some bread on top of it, you was finna see some real paper. That was the only thing that differentiated from a lot of these teams, you know what I'm saying? Who had more funding initially. So P had a lot of um, bread to fund his company. So instead of selling out early, he was able to reinvest in himself. Do you feel like that blueprint that you guys put together back in the 90s is now in the blueprint that a lot of artists is, are using today because we talk about owning your IP and your publishing, your rights, et cetera, et cetera. Isn't that the same blueprint? Well, yeah. I mean, we were all about being self-sustained, right? We, but we had to do it out of necessity, right? We, we didn't have the option to go to these other major markets and these major labels and the subsidiaries and get those deals. So we had to learn how to get all the music to people and how to make money off of it by ourselves. 
Um, and we tried to take the, put the power back in the artist's hands. Now, in 2022, the artist has more power than he's ever had in, in his entire life. He does not have to go to a distribution company. He does not have to go to a record company. He can put his stuff right up directly on a streaming site on several streaming services and make multiple revenue streams. When we started making music, you had to put one record out, sell that record, which didn't make a lot, and then sell that album. People had to go into a store and buy your whole album and fall for you to make money. Now I could take one record, I could put it out on YouTube, Spotify, Tidal, Pandora. I could put it out on 10 different platforms and make millions of dollars just off one song. You don't have to put the effort into putting a whole album out, promoting it across. We used to spend, Tens of thousands of dollars, you know what I'm saying? Getting the bus, going across the country, going doing radio stations, talk to all of this. You can do a Zoom now <laughs> with every radio station right. that you want to talk to all at one time. Sit down for two hours and everybody asks right. the questions that they want to. People don't have to physically get up and go to a record store to get your music. They can sit in the privacy of their home. We can download somebody right now while we sitting there talking. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right, before you go to your question on our show, I love knowing what they doing. They love to get a flowers to the artists while they're living. Here we like to break bread with legends. So uh, y'all bring the food while Arian going to his question. Oh, swanky. All right, so uh, it's, it's, it's what I love about technology in general, right? And a lot of industries are pivoting uh, because technology is cutting out the middleman, yes. right? And so, be, thank you so much. And, be, and because of that, um, there's a lot of new industries uh, being born. Um, but my question is this, right? What I don't understand, like with like big artists, like so you look at like like a Drake or uh, you know just the, just the biggest artist, uh, Billy Ellis, whatever the case may be. Like why don't they band together and start a streaming service where so we get half mm. the, the revenue? Because like we're driving the culture. These Spotify deals, I mean Spotify companies, like Spotify, Apple, all these cats, they robbing artists, putting it on my, on my streaming platform. You get 50% of the revenue, right? Because we still need to do business and operations for the company. But, dog, you getting what you deserve. And, then, and this is really on a, deeper, it, on a deeper level. This is really what's going on in America right now is you see a lot of these union strikes. You see a lot of these workers not getting paid what they feel they're getting paid. Right. It's exactly what's been happening in the entertainment industry for decades is they are raping the artists. These, these major corporations are taking a lot of money out of the cats that are driving the culture. And I just don't understand why, as artists, cats don't band together and say, yo, Spotify. Why, why are we here? Because they don't own their music. They don't own their, they don't own the, they don't own the music. They, in my, I'm, I'm going to let you say what you're saying. In my mind, they can't go and negotiate these deals on behalf of their catalog because they don't own their catalog. Mm. They don't own their publisher. They don't own all these things outright. Right. So the, the streaming services in order to use this music has to go to the label, has to go to the publishing company because that's who owns the masters to this but stuff. But to your point, what is the point of a label nowadays? What, to do a lot of the work that an artist doesn't want to do or feel they can't do? What, like, ma like marketing? The one thing that you took out, the main factor that you took out why they can't come together, let's just stop, let's put the elephant in the room, the competition factor. First of all, this music is an every man for itself. That happens, that's, that's no different than sports, that's no different. What I mean by competition, you don't have a lot of guys that want to see other guys with the same amount of money. I want to see you doing good, but not as good as me. That takes the competition fact out of it. You know what I'm saying? Terrible, like, Kiki, I thought you covered me better than that. I love you. I'm not talking about me and you. I'm oh. saying the overall factor yeah, 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 of it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The overall factor of the game is you tell my, let's all get together 10 up. We're going to go be 10 men. No, that's, that, it sounds great. From my standpoint, to, to pick it back off what he said, well, artists don't own the music. See me, I got 60 CDs. I own them all. So my revenue is different from being under record companies that owned my, that owned my projects or owned my catalog. Five, six, seven years later, I did 12 CDs one time in a year. This before streaming coming out, we know nothing of it. And they had, man, Kiki, you got this little CD. Man, you got another one coming out. They had no idea streaming was coming. Now streaming here. Them same 12 CDs that were little bitty CD, they open to my fans. You can get them at any time, anywhere. You don't have to get a CD or drive over here, pick it up. The game is, is different. So a lot of artists, like he said, you can't give away, you can't negotiate something you don't own. And when I say own it, these people be having contracts where, yeah, man, we got five years to distribute it. And when that five years up, we got another two. 
and we got this, and we got this. There's a lot of, but ain't that, but ain't that what Jay Z tried to do with title? Yeah, and I say this. This is my thing. I can read why though. If this business model was as solid as it seems, mm -hmm. then why don't the rock stars do it? But this wouldn't, this wouldn't be, this wouldn't be an issue that the top tier artists are facing, right? This would be. This would be a Brady scratching Gronk's back and say, I, I got you. I'm finna throw you this pass against you. Incentives, incentives. Incentives. Baby. He did it with title, but I mean, he's still in competition. It's not, I mean, uh, yeah, title started it, as that concept, it, as it, artists it, coming in. It comes in. from the unison from the artists saying like, yo, like, I mean, if, if, you, if you just think about it for two seconds, Spotify, Apple, they are fucking artists, period. Majority of artists. I mean, the majority. Yeah. I mean, like we're talking, we're, we're talking eighty, we're talking eighty-five to ninety percent of all the music being made and all the shit you ever heard. They don't own that music. Would you, I ask you and Bun, would would you say go the route we went <clears throat> instead of signing with a major record label and going that way? No. The reason the. the, the, no. the I wouldn't tell him to do that. Because my work ethic and what it took me to get here and where I come from and the game I come from, you're not gonna get that back. You have to be, you have to understand too, some people, if you ask some people, do they want to be rich or do they want to be famous? You they want to be famous. Most of them want to be famous. They, they get into famous, this, you ain't gonna be rich. You're gonna make somebody else rich. It's a lot of patience that go with that. <laughs> it's a lot of, it, it, ain't nobody got patience to be great. No more. You can, you can use famous, you can use famous to get rich, but you can't rest on the laurels of being famous, right? In order for you to use your fame to be rich, you can't sit around just being famous. Hold on, say that again, what you just said? I, I said, in order for you to use your fame to get rich, you can't just sit around being famous. For example, Jay-Z is, is a billionaire. Jay-Z not a billionaire from rapping. Jay-Z used the rap to perpetuate other business deals that made him a billionaire. Same thing with Puffy. Puffy's a billionaire. Puffy didn't make a billion dollars from music. Puffy made a billion dollars from using his fame and popularity from the music to perpetuate other business deals and revenue streams. This is how this heard, works. When the last time you heard a kid, a teenager, talking about being a doctor or a lawyer or an accountant, none of that. Models, actors. YouTubers. In, in YouTubers, uh, instant gratification. I don't have time to wait three years to be great. I don't have time to do this independent driving on the road, kissing baby. I'm ready to go in the studio, drop a track, drop the YouTube, and get to this money right now. I when I was a kid and I looked at TV, I'd be like, man, I want to be that when I grow up. Kids look at TV and be like, I want to be that now. If you think you can go to practice with your whole linebacking crew every day, you love them. They work hard. But you know you're a first round pick. You know they don't deserve to make what you make. It's the same thing with these here, man. You're going to have in this rap. Now, listen that. to what I'm saying. Let me finish. You're going to have that in rap, man. It's a competition factor where you feel like, I put in this work. I put in this many albums. I done this here. I paid this many dudes. I mean, so, well, even that, some people just some people just don't care about other people. How veteran feel about, I've been sitting here four years putting in this work, and this young hot whippersnapper, he catching balls, he out of college, he finna come in and break more bread than me. I never, I never cared about no shit like that. So That's what, you. What, what I'm I just saying, about, it's proportional. Yeah, what I cared yeah, about was the NFL giving cats uh, lifelong health insurance. Like, that's what I give a shit about, right? Because the, 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 the slot, it? you can't get, no, hell no. These cats pretend to care about player safety. They, they pretend to care about uh, players that have built this the legacy of the NFL and the brand of the NFL and you just yeah. cast it off to the side, right? I was making the point that you was making. T.O. got problem with Donovan. But he ain't going to bat. A.B. got problem with... No, but ain't going but to it's the bat. issue. The cast today, the superstars of the today that are, that are negotiating the CBA with the owners, right? They not saying, we not doing nothing unless you give lifetime health insurance to these cats. But, but, on, I, was, I was just, I was just talking to Perk what they doing with that whole situation is. They're, they're talking to the young guys right now that don't get it, don't understand. So they dangling, oh, we're gonna give you 17 games, give you an extra bit of money, blah, blah, blah. But then there's language within that agreement that's going right. over the OGs and the old heads. When it comes to sports and entertainment, right? Like we have associations, player associations, mm. right? You guys don't have that. Y'all don't have no retirement plan. They don't have insurance. Don't even say that. Our, 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 our association for the NFL, and I'm going to gas him up because I already know. 
our association don't work for us. Our association represents us, but work for the NFL. But it's the difference between like a league like the NBA and the NFL on multiple fronts is the NBA is uh, more socially aware, right? And I don't know the inner workings like you do, right? But from the outside looking in, it feel like y'all are a partnership. Y'all say, okay, we working together so, and this is what so we want. So it is, when it, when it comes down to the NBA, it starts with the commissioner, right? If you got a bullshit commissioner, then everything is gonna be fucked up. Like when David Stern was in office, everything was fucked up for the players. Adam Silver came into office and everything changed. For example, when Adam- And the popularity S grew too. But when Adam, Sil Adam Silver came in, all of a sudden, about five years ago, retired players now have insurance for their families for life, health insurance. Like we got it. We didn't have that when David Stern was in office. But I do have a question to go back to, because I wanted to ask Bun and Kiki this. So it's two parts. One, I wanted to ask to all the upcoming rappers and artists, what advice would both of you guys give them to go out there and be successful? Two, would you guys, if y'all family or friends came up to y'all and said they wanted to get into the quote unquote gangster rapping, would y'all approve of it? Well, I don't even think you have to be a quote gangster rapper, right? I think it's not even about the rapping, it's about the But that's gangsters. what they rapping about, OG. Well, no, what's happening is, is that they actually doing real street shit, right? And they also rapping. They're not getting killed over the rapping. They're getting killed over the street shit because they claim certain sets and those sets are active in the street and the music is not going to stop you from feeling the repercussions of whatever's coming with what you're doing in the street. You know what I'm saying? This debate that we have, and we all feel some type of way. A lot of dudes walk away from the NBA and NFL and they have they feel some type of way. As they should. Right. Especially, especially when you look at a sport like baseball. Mm, that's that, a whole that, other conversation. Monopoly that, money. That get taken, that, like, just you just think about their pension, everything that they, I mean, like, baseball players are, first of all, they are already making, you know what I'm saying, six, seven hundred million right now, right? Like, you, they signing crazy deals. And on top of that, they pension, when they retire, it's, 45, 60 grand a month, dog. Like, what are we talking about? Y'all don't have that. We have nothing. Our industry is the wild. All so, you, all you our industry is the wild, wild west. All you, you have over here is maturity. What does that mean? You better mature into that money. Mm. That's what you better do. You don't have nothing set up. Who's for, teaching that, though? Nobody. Yourself? The music industry ain't a league. Ain't no commissioner. Yeah. It's wide open. We don't, we don't even have age restriction. A five-year-old making a record got to go through the same situation that a 40-year-old person so got to go through to make a record. So why don't y'all unionize? I don't understand. How? Who are we unionizing against, first of all? Who the are we unionizing against? Corporations. So they, they still out here signing 360 deals. They still out here signing people to faulty contracts that, that get them on the back end. Like, union, like, have a union that says that's independent from but corporations. But listen, you run in a, you run in a situation. Gotta go you got to go through, through you got to go through steps to get to right? the league. That's it, that's Everybody, like, y'all have a players, y'all have a, but wait, wait, wait. Like, y'all have a players association that collective, that goes and talks to one body. Right, and negotiates on behalf of no, everybody. No, but, but they also have independent agents for each representative of a player. Yeah, no, but no, y'all no. got a certain yeah, amount of people. We deal in IP. In you don't deal in IP. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You, you don't deal in IP. Okay, okay. Well, what's, what's the difference? We, we don't own, a lot of the artists don't own the IP. Because, There's no ground be, to stand Because up. of the corporations that but are listen, what no, you no, say. No, 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 no. It's not, it's not. Wait, wait, I'm an artist. Wait, 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 wait. I'm an artist. So I can tell you this. Right. I can tell you this. Right. When you go in to sign a record deal, that's, you're 18, 19 years old. You're not thinking contract that's law. My, that's my point. Right. My point is the corporations, which is the labels, are fucking over the artists because they're, fault, they're assigning them to faulty deals that they are unbeknownst to but, them. But you're operating under the assumption that every person that signs a record deal to a company is signed into a corporation. Many of us signed to individuals. It would still be, un, you still have tax re regulations that you have to follow. It still falls under the, uh, the status of corporation, albeit a mom and pop, albeit a Fortune 500 company. It is still a corporation, which is why there is, there is no liaison between the artist and the corporation. Right, you're That's talking about a league, though. You talking about a league. Wait, 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 wait. Is what it, is a a, uh, 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 a players union 
other than a, a, gathering a whole bunch of together and saying to vote on what the league really wants you to vote on. Right. <laughs> but but because, but because, but, but you wait, don't wait. have the power. And you know why I can we say you don't have the power? Because because now. because when the we NFL when the time. NFL locked out, they went and got people that would do it cheaper. And you can't tell me that the music industry will not find people that will take those bulls deals because they want to be famous they don't want to be rich uh, this is this is this is you're a, talking this about this is a this is a textbook this is a this is a textbook worker union issue this is you're, you're describing it there will always be there will always be workers that you will jump talking in line about because a worker why? issue listen, for a league though listen listen, listen. your skill be, set takes my, to a league you, you, you're my, saying my, it, he's saying my, it though go, go ahead go ahead go ahead the, the, there will always be workers that will jump the line because why because the corporations have leverage over people the, and, and until people, uh, us, until artists, until workers understand that they have that leverage, if every on Spotify, every person on Spotify took their music out, Spotify has no leverage. They're going to have to up the end. First of all, yeah. everybody's not playing in the NFL, in yeah, the yeah, music yeah, industry, yeah, right? Yeah. Listen, so, listen, so it's different you, tiers. There's different union. tiers to this. Listen, no, no, it's bro, still yeah. tiers. Everything is tiers. You talking about some union shit. You got to make it to a league to unionize. Y'all got a y'all got a group of people. I wouldn't give a and damn. It's 5,000 It's 5,000 players that want to play in high school and college. Only 1500 going. Right, 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 right. Only 1500 going. That's not the case over and also here. You get signed to a 360 deal and they No, 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 no that's a but that's a problem. Here's the thing. No, 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 no. I got it. I got it from here. I got it from here. I got it from here. Go ahead. I got it from here. Every independent artist is not signed to every, anybody. And that's great. Right? They're yeah. not signed. So the young artists that you said that are signing these 360 deals is not as many of them as you think. There are a lot of them, a lot more of them are independently finding Do success. You know Soldier Boy you got know? rich sitting in front of a computer. They eventually went and got a different deal because there were things that he didn't have an infrastructure to do. But if you can put a team together like Jay Prince and build an infrastructure independently, you don't have to work within the system. You can create the culture that you want for your employees within your company and make sure that the people that work for you have dental, have health insurance and big cover. I hear what you're saying. I hear everybody Everybody's point. I don't understand why if the OG talking, why we not listening? Because if 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 Bum B, he the artist, he been through it, he broke people, he did things. Why we not? Why we can't just listen to his perspective and then come back? He's like got, we, what we he's saying is not, it's not right that now. he doesn't have a solid idea, I know he doesn't but the entertainment solid. industry does not, it doesn't operate as a collective. Answer me this, answer me this question. It, like, and not in theory, like answer, answer, Yeah, answer me this question. Does it not operate like that because of the system or because of the collectivized understanding of what people are getting into? Which, what, here's the thing, oh, if you're independent yeah. and you try to get you into the system, listen to the OG if talk. you're independent and you try to get into the system and the system doesn't accept you, right. but then you learn the mechanisms of the system mm -hmm. and learn how to operate outside of the system, then why would you be concerned about how anything within the system works? That's the system's problem. So the system didn't want me anyway, so I'm not concerned about how that, what he's saying. We don't care about how it's working for y'all. So, y'all don't want us no way. So go figure this shit out. So, you know, it doesn't work for everybody like that. Lead. We're not all on the same page. We're not all on the same page. Okay, there's something out right now called NFTs. It authenticates ownership, right? You come out with a song. Mm -hmm. I'll use Dave Chappelle. Okay. Why was Dave Chappelle going through all this bullshit, right? Because at 30 years old, married with wife and kids, he came up with the Chappelle show. He sold it to whoever he wanted to because they offered him one, three million dollars. I don't know what they offered him. And he sold it to them. Three million dollars to him is a lot because he don't see the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Mm -hmm. Well, they took it. They made 50 off of it. It got popular. Then they sold it to Netflix or whoever the f it was. Then they made 500 million. They didn't get a piece of it. Everything that you create right now, you can turn into an NFT. And when you go into business or whatever, you can transfer it as an NFT and you can put in a smart contract, you can put an automatic royalty at the back end. But you, well, I, like, what is the difference yeah, between that and a Yeah, but you don't have to do that with a record company. You don't have to do that with a record You don't have to, but you can. <laughs> so what's the point? Why wouldn't you? All I'm saying is the culture could not agree. We can't agree as black people in general just on what black people's rights are. So so we're going so so we've got to get here before we can get there. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I've been confused since you started talking. I really have. I've been sitting over here chilling, but I've really been confused. I just want to know. 
out of all this, break it down to me in lamest terms. What are you trying to say? Long story short. Because, I mean, you went to the politics and I was lost right now. Got you. Got you. Got you. Got you. Got you. Right now, okay. what moves culture in America, right, is it's our culture, right? It's music. It's entertainment, correct? Mm -hmm. The issue is you have big corporations, right? Okay. Spotify, Apple, all these cats that harbor that intellectual property and pay the artists pennies. Now, when you're talking about a Drake, a Billie Eilish, a bi big time streamers, a big time music makers, right? When you're talking about them, those pennies add up to multi-million dollars. That's huge, right? Mm -hmm. But when you're talking about uh, average artists who are, you know, have $100,000 100, uh, listeners a month or 50,000 listeners a month, they're not getting the residuals that they deserve, right? right? Because the corporations are saying, we're gonna pull those pennies from you to keep our corporation okay. going. Hey, hold on, hold on. This, oh, is, this, is, what I got, this is what I got out of it. I don't think the big dogs have a problem with actually like trying to form and make something like that happen. Mm -hmm. But what they're saying is, is that the pups that's growing up in the hood, they ain't trying to hear that shit. No, they're not. Let me explain so you got a, so you got, you got your, you got your local, you got your local hood rapper mm -hmm. in Chicago. Right. Then you got your local hood rapper in New York. They're not trying to hear that. Or you know the difference between not, if Drake so, and, so, and Jay Z came together and made the two big. Just say they Drake and Jay Z came together and they made what you're saying. Mm -hmm. It's still a choice that you have to make to go know, deal with them. Y'all are not listening to what I'm saying. You're not listening to what I'm saying. No, you you know, what I was saying you're talking about these these artists signing these deals. They if you don't own. IP, you don't have a ground to stand on to negotiate. Very few people own IP. And, and to the those that don't own IP, they don't look at them and say, damn, you need to own your shit. They like, damn, why you ain't get your shit? You was worried about being famous. You wasn't worried about your money. You wasn't worried about the business. Now you want the rest of us to come in and stand in and help you get paid. That is not how this works. And everybody that gets to where you're talking about in the NFL gets there pretty much the same way. The entertainment industry does not work. You only have one chance to get to the NFL. Y'all are thinking in this like box and it's wild because y'all are artists. I love that Arian is bringing this up because he's got an extremely valid argument. But there's a lot of just the same way that you guys are talking about nuances when it comes with coach with players and relationships. There's nuances about this music industry. First of all, who's the head? Who speak for all rappers? Nobody. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, tell Exactly. Who, go, who are we gonna point and say, you go talk to them for us? Help me out here, help me out here, help me out here. Help me. I, I, I like y'all music, I listen. Right. You talked about Jay-Z being the GOAT, being Tom Brady. But isn't this what the GOAT, Jay-Z tried to do with title? Yes. Now correct me if I'm wrong, hold on, tell me, because it yes. goes to you, but this is a, it's a bigger conversation. Yeah. So he did that. Yeah. All right. And he offered some of the best rates that you can get in streaming. Uh -huh. Some of the best. Which uh -huh. was still predatory in my opinion. Hold on, Go hold ahead. on. So you got Jay-Z out there. I, there's a song out there called Entrepreneur. Pharrell, Jay-Z came together. In that song, Jay-Z says, merrily, 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 eating off these streams. He said, YouTube doing this, these, the same thing you're saying. He's saying, he don't, but why can't we, us, come together and have one person speaking for us, right? That is, it goes back to what y'all was saying. It's like- Everyone it's has so different concerns. That's the problem. We all don't share the same concerns. Right, Facts. You know what I'm saying? Here, You're yeah. operating well, under that, the assumption that artists care about these things. They don't. It. I'm operating under the hope that, that we wake up and realize we yeah. are the leverage. Yeah, we but, are the leverage. But that was, well, why doesn't that work in your league? Why doesn't that work because in your job? Okay, perfect example, my G, perfect example. In 2013. Y'all got way more money. Cut, listen, <laughs> listen, 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 listen. In 2013, I, I was on a documentary called School, The Price of College Sports, right? Go watch it if you haven't. And it was talking about, and this was before it was cool to bash the NCAA, right? Mm. I, 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 got, I got on a documentary and said, I took money under the table in college. Every single person that I didn't know that bought in college took money under the table. I you ain't did, take no money. You did. You was the only that didn't. Everybody else did, dog, right? Everybody else did. Here, here's, here's the issue. I got I got lambasted from all my peers. Bro, I like I got I, I never got mic'd up after 2013. And the reason why was because we was playing a 49ers, bro. And that, that documentary dropped and everybody was calling me a snitch. Gary Payton called me a snitch. Dick Vitale called me a snitch. All this I didn't name no names. I just told him I took money under the table, right? 
all under the guise of this. When workers understand that they have leverage, they are the leverage, they are the, the draw to, to the, the public, that's when change happens. That's when change happens. Roughly, give or take a few, there's 10 billion people on the planet. And so like you said, competition, everybody have their own viewpoints. Everybody wants something different out of this world in different right. situations. We are in a, in a moment right now as a culture to where you have leaders, whether it's Bum B, whether it's Yuki, whether it's Jay-Z, whether, okay, Tom Brady, LeBron James, where we're starting this conversation. We're just not there yet because we do have power. The power is in the people. We do have to come together, but it's a lot of work to do. It's a lot of work to do. So I want to end with this. The GOAT. Who's the GOAT? We ending the show. Who's the GOAT in basketball? I'm going with LeBron James. And here's why I'm going with LeBron James. I tell people this time and time again. Nobody has ever exceeded expectations like this brother has. Nobody, no athlete in ever in history has had the pressure that this man has had on him. And nobody can say that he underachieved. At the age of 16, he was on the cover of Sports Illustrated labeled the chosen one, right. the chosen one. So I know Jordan went six for six in championships. This is not an individual sport. We saw with LeBron James and his numbers, what he put up against Golden State and KD and them powerhouses, he just didn't have the help. We saw what he was capable of doing. We see that LeBron James is the best all around player to ever touch the damn basketball. Mm. You can go argue with your mama. Mm. Who, win, who, win, who, wins, who wins it this year? In the NBA, I got I got hold Kiki because Kiki Ray jump in, but he's <laughs> blowing. Who wins it? Cause you got yo LeBron James, you got Russ, and uh, I ain't say Russ. I ain't say nothing good about Russ. I did not say nothing good about Russ this year. I know who he wants. Who win it? Just say who win it. Who win it? Who win it? Who win it? You know what? Who win it? You know what? You know what? I'm gonna say Chris. I'm gonna say it right now. Chris Paul and the, Chris Paul get his first championship this year. Here's my question. Here's my question. If I was to make a track, right? And I, 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 turned, it, I turned it into an NFT. Uh -huh. What does that mean? I put, the, I put, I, I put, digital, I put digital ownership on the back end of it. So it says, DJ made this track, DJ has ownership. And in the smart contract, I put an automatic royalty. My is the best song out right now. Anybody that I wanted to give this song to, I signed with a record label. And then they go out and they do whatever they want to it. But on the back end of it, it's a 5% royalty for me. What, what I'm asking is, do you think record labels or whoever you got assigned to would accept that? Record companies don't care. They're already getting paid off your music. It doesn't How? matter. They, they own it. They can't. It's they own it. Yeah, they can't. Yeah, because you don't they put it. You don't understand the music yeah, industry. Yeah. Next. Okay, you next. All right, all right. Next. Stop, 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 stop. Right. I'm not okay, even going to argue okay. with you about this. Okay. All right. Aaron, yeah. will we ever see the artists do what you're saying you want them to do and also the players go form their own league? Not in my lifetime. Not in your lifetime. Not in my lifetime. Uh, we are, and it's going to get hella. All right, but listen. <laughs> it is what it is, man. So, so we as a culture are indoctrinated with 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 capital gain. All we want is money, right? And we don't and we don't and we don't understand the broader understanding of community, right? To where if I eat, you eat, and that's how we rock, right? And until and until we get come to a better understanding culturally, and that not just mean black folk, I mean all folk, right? But particularly our people, until we understand that this system that it's dog eat dog is killing us, then we gonna perpetuate this exactly what we have. Where we getting we getting cut off the back end of corporations. We getting we getting cut off uh, of of us. We cutting each hey, other's hey, heads man. off. So you better get your. All right, now you in the show, Kiki. My... Anything you want to say, <laughs> however long you want to say it, you in the show. You want to respond to any of this Kiki. stuff? You go. Just don't talk about Thomas Edward Patrick. <laughs> Thomas Edward Patrick Brady. <laughs> Listen, man, the NFT game. I'm still trying to figure it out. I'm in it. You know what I'm saying? It, I'm still trying to figure it out. I don't have the correct answers to, to, to say yay or nay. But on, on another note, that what you saying over there, that shit ain't finna happen. I just said that. Mm -mm. Because you got to understand this right here. This is the point that we was making before, before it was loud. Hey, man, the NFL is the highest 
thing that you can get from a football player. You know, you could try this Canadian, you could try this, but your main goal is the in Jay-Z came with title, that still wasn't intriguing for us to say it's the best. It's too many leagues, it's too many choices. You get what I'm saying? Like, Apple is a choice, this is a choice. So my whole thing is with the league, it's one choice that's gonna get the best. When we get drafted, we're gonna get here. It's not a draft system or anything that's like that. This kid right here, you got a YouTuber. You got kids who start with YouTube, they 16, they millionaires in a year. In two, you're not convincing him to go to no league. He don't give care about Jay Z title, none of it. Yeah, that's it's not no. Uh, here he is. I just made ten million this year, and you talking about let's come, let's you. Man, I wouldn't give a f if he making some old me. I'm you don't give. It's too many. But in the league, you have fifteen hundred players. Let's come together as fifteen hundred players and figure this out. In this rap game right here, it's fifteen hundred motherfuckers. We ain't even heard about. It. We ain't even seen them. We don't know what they thinking. You know what I'm saying? One thing about these 1,500 in the league, we can, in, we can engage in their mindset, see what they thinking, and, and you can take a charge. It, over here, you got 500, we don't know where he at. We, man, this is a new game that's so crazy where you've never seen this. You got more millionaires in this game than you ever see. I can show you millionaires with two, 300,000 worth of jewelry on, Rolls Royce's big ass. You ain't never heard of them. You ain't seen them video or nothing. No, that's why are they going to unionize? Listen, listen, we, we might need to break <laughs> this down. We might need to break this down to a part two, and we might need to do a whole I Am Athlete Houston show. There's so much to talk about. Yeah, appreciate you. We had to fight to get a meal. Yeah, wrongfully accused. We had to fight to get a pill. That's why we right to get a deal. He on the team, he got to eat, you know, despite the skills. Fat. Keep it riding for the fam. You got to like the we in wheels straight up. But in the past, bad. Work up in the trash bag. I'll pass a lot to take the test before I pass class. Yeah. And my family needed bread. I had to come correct. That's why I keep airing it out like I just passed gas.